Myra Drum was a fearless old lady. Her words gave hope to the hopeless and struck fear into the heart of the British establishment. In one of her most famous speeches, she addressed the beleaguered people of Belfast, who had recently been victims of loyalist pogroms, and sent a warning to the British government that the crappies would no longer lay down. You people who have suffered so much over the last few years, and in this last year in particular, have been burned from your homes, running through the night with your children in their night clothes, while your burns, homes burned behind you. You have seen how loyalists were allowed to burn all in their path, while the RUC watched and could barely disguise their glee as Catholic families lost everything they owned. You have seen the way the Crown forces treat nationalists. We march peacefully, demanding not the extraordinary, simply the rights that every human being is entitled to. One man, one vote, the right to decent housing, and an end to gerrymandering. And what was the state's response to those very basic requests? Buttons and bullets. To collude with those at Burnt Tullet. To beat the marchers into the ground while the RUC stood and watched and laughed at the pain inflicted upon them. But we are not on our knees anymore. The crappy boy will no longer lie down. Just as a phoenix rises out of the ashes, so do you, the people. As always, it is not those that can inflict the most, but those who can endure the most that will win the battle. <coughs> and the Irish people have endured from Cromwell to this day and continue to endure the British state's oppression of our people. But now we bring the fight to their door. <coughs> we are a risen people. Look around you. <coughs> Look behind you. See the RUC listen to every word. They fear you. They have the weapons, the technology, and the might of the British war machine behind them. And still, they fear you. For centuries, tyrants like them have tried to defeat people like us. They cannot and they will not. For we too have an army. It's the army of the people. It will defend you. When someone in the audience shouted, Up the IRA! Myra was quick to correct them. Don't shout up the IRA! Join the IRA! <laughs> Myra's remarks often drew the ire of the British state, finding herself behind bars on multiple occasions for her inspirational words. But if the British thought the threat of a prison cell would silence her, they were wrong. In November of 1971, Myra was sentenced to six months in prison for her speech at a protest in Derry. But even the judge couldn't escape a severe dressing down. Interning or putting a middle-aged woman in jail will not quench the flame of the Irish people. Because nothing but the destruction of the Irish people will ever quench that flame. Long live the IRA! God save Ireland! Myra was passionate about the place of women in the struggle and often drew on James Connolly's pamphlet The Reconquest of Ireland when discussing the issue. Women are at last breaking the chains of being slaves to slaves. We must make sure that they never go back to being slaves to slaves, but be the leaders and policy makers of a new Ireland. Speaking to an American journalist in 1972, Myra gave an insight into the stresses and strains of being a political activist. At the present time, I'm a married woman with a husband in Long Kesh who's been interned for 13 years altogether in three different phases of internment without trial. He went back in 1956 and was in until 1960. Now, he's been back since the 9th of August. I've had three periods 
of internment in my life. In that I suffered internment as a young girl, having a fiancé in prison, and then as a young wife, with a husband in prison, and five children to rear on my own. And now, as a middle-aged woman, my husband, who's also middle-aged, is back in prison again. Myra was determined that there was no place for sectarianism in republicanism. She often spoke of the need to unite Catholic, Protestant and the centre. I have never attacked a Protestant nor the Protestant religion, ever. My whole effort is against the British. And while she was often scathing of the British government on their repressive policies in Ireland, she made sure that the Free State never forgot that they too had questions to answer. Faulkner with internment used it rather crudely. He grabbed everyone, opened long cash, and pushed them in. The Taoiseach, Cosgrave, does it differently. He takes Republicans to court and locks them up. I wouldn't ask the loyalist people of the North to come under the sort of fascist regime that is in the South. I would want a government in which our people participate. But it is certain I wouldn't want them to go under the sort of government I wouldn't go under myself. She even took her message to Britain and left an anti-internment protest in London in no doubt as to where the blame lay for the conflict. There are no thugs and terrorists in Belfast. There are brave young men and women fighting for freedom. And the only thugs and terrorists are those dressed in British Army uniforms. The British government may try and tell you otherwise, but we know the truth because we have to live with it. They are hypocrites, liars and hirelings. But the Irish people, as we always have, will overcome. In August of 1975, Myra addressed a massive anti-internment march in Dunville Park. Many a time I have stood on this platform and many a time I came depressed to it. But today I could not feel depressed when I look at the crowd that has stood behind the provisional Republican movement. After four years to see this crowd still fighting, to see that you are ready to stay on the streets and protest this is the most heartening thing that any prisoner could know about. We have brought down Stormont. The assembly is gone. Yet nothing will ever satisfy our people but a republic. And there will be no peace until we get our demand. Our demand initially was for the end of internment. But our demands will not cease. We want freedom for every man, woman and child, every political prisoner who went out to fight and who went to jail. When peace comes, we will need everyone in this country. You all will have to work hard to build our new nation. Our shoulders will have to be to the wheel. You will have to do your best. We are asking you to stand firmly just as you have done in the last week, in the last four or five years. When you stand up here, you think of many things. And when our boys and girls come home again, there will be people who won't come home. People like Dorothy McGuire, Maura Meehan, James Bryson, and all the lads who died with them. There is going to be many an aching heart then. There will be many an empty chair by the fireside. They will not come home to us. But we must not take any steps backwards. Our steps will be onward. For if we don't, the ghosts of the martyrs who died for you, for me, for this country, will haunt us to eternity. In the midst of the British government efforts to criminalise Republicans, and in particular to demonise Myra, she refused to be bullied. 
Speaking publicly about the torture of detainees, Myra said, Despite the efforts to convince the non-unionist minority that the RUC is now a reformed body, totally different from that which operated in 1969, the continued activities of this force totally condemn them as unacceptable and rejected by the nationalist population. Myra was a fierce defender of the prisoners, even though she made it clear to the BBC that they were well fit to defend themselves when the British government removed special category status in 1976. When the prisoners take whatever stand they take, we will stand firmly behind them, and whatever they expect us to do, we will do it wholeheartedly. Because it was the provisionals who got political status for everybody, and they are the people who will hold on to it. The late Jimmy Steele went on strip strikes and wore no clothes rather than wear a prison garb. And we had girls protesting in Armagh prison at the same time, all for to get political status. They are political prisoners. And if Marilyn Reese or anyone belonging to him comes into open conflict with the prisoners, then he will have the people outside to reckon with. And the prisoners are quite capable of taking a very strong attitude themselves. He should remember the burning of Long Kesh. It was the provisional Republicans who burned Long Kesh. The girls in our mad jail were able to take a governor hostage and hold hostages and wreck that jail so if this attack on the prisoners is a red herring to distract from the other chaos that he's in, he's only making more trouble for himself. On the 16th of August 1976, Myra was again remanded in custody after being charged with taking part in an illegal demonstration. She refused to recognize the court and ignored the magistrate, choosing instead to wave to her family in the courtroom. When she did address the court, it was in typically scathing terms. I have had seven days of solitary confinement under the most horrible conditions, and I suggest the Red Cross go in and investigate the cells people are being detained in. I have been politically arrested. My trial will be politically controlled, and the decision will not rest with you. It will rest with your political overlords. You already know the sentence which will be passed. Long live the Republic! Myra was a woman who would not be silenced. And in the end, the British government stopped her the only way they knew how. <laughs> On October the 28th, 1976, British assassins murdered her while she lay in her hospital bed. Fittingly, just a few weeks before she was killed, she gave her last public speech back here, back home, in South Armagh. But what is peace? The kind that the Republican movement has been fighting for is peace with justice. Peace that our people can live. Peace that our people can work and have houses. And our people can walk free through the streets of their own towns, their own cities, and their own country. It will be the peace that will be restored to the nation after 800 years, when for the last time, British imperialism leaves our shore. There is something special about this area. When we in Belfast or Derry were hard pressed, when we were fighting with our backs to the wall, when things were really bad, there was always one bright spark. Somebody, somewhere in South Armagh, would put another match to the fuse, and it worked. And we really appreciated it. All I ask, is that they make a declaration of intent to get out of our country and then I'd leave them alone. 
I believe, as all Republicans do, that the Irish people, loyalist and Republican, Catholics, Protestants, whatever you like, are the only people who can decide what is best for the Irish nation. God save Ireland! Long live the IRA! And I have to say, I'm very, very, very proud of what we have produced here. This is entirely produced by Republican Publications and everybody involved on a voluntary uh, basis. And I hope that all of Mara's family and I hope her friends are pleased what is a, a tribute to their mother, to their aunt, to their mamo, to their sister, and of course to Jimmy's wife, because this is about Jimmy Drum as well, and Murrah's story couldn't be told without telling his story. As far as I'm concerned, and Richard and anybody involved in this, as long as her family and friends recognise her in this, we're happy. So go and meet him <laughs> Because this has been a brilliant occasion, I think it was very important to South Armagh honour Moira. Uh, I think the reenactments was brilliant, the crowd was brilliant, it's great that the family are so happy. And then to finish it all off, this is a very important booklet and it is great, I think, that anyone should be looking for a copy of it. The thing, the way the photograph was found of Moira and Bobby Sands after all these years, there's just one such photo and it's really good to have Jerry here and so many of the family as well and it's very significant on this, the 100th anniversary of our birth. So I'm really, really happy that we've done this event, happy with the turnout, happy with every aspect of it and I think it has been a brilliant occasion.